Hey everybody, it's Carrie from the Rapid City Public Library, your friendly neighborhood teen librarian. And if you are watching this video, then you signed up for subscription boxes. Now, everybody got a tote bag this time, but not everybody got the same animal and not everybody got the same art format to make your tote bag in. So if you're watching this video, then that means that you picked embroidery for your trash panda treasure box. Let's take a look, see what you got, and how to use it. So in your box, you will have gotten embroidery thread, a marker, a needle, and these tissue paper um, templates for what your animal is gonna look like. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna use the panda for my example. And what you wanna do is figure out where you want it on your bag and then take that fine point permanent marker and you're basically going to use dots and outline the shape on that tracing paper. You want to push hard enough that the pen goes through and marks on the actual bag itself. So you can see I'm going through and doing all the outlines, the eyes and the nose for the leopard, the spirals on the inside. Um, and then the plants or the sunburst or the waves on the outside, depending on your animal as well. It's gonna look a little bit like that when you're done. You can kind of see how it matches up. If you need to use the pen to draw a little bit to make sure you know where your lines are gonna go, you can. Um, you can also keep that tracing paper nearby. Now I got big eye needles for you guys, so they should be pretty easy to thread. And um, we'll start out with a length of embroidery thread, and I just measure against the bag, so twice as long as the width of the bag. And then you'll notice that if you look real close, the embroidery thread is actually made up of six different strands. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull them apart so we have two strands that are three each. And when you pull it to separate it, you just go very slowly and very evenly. If you pull too fast, you'll get knots, which are a real pain. Once you have your length of embroidery thread, you can thread that onto the needle. All three of those strands will go through. Pull a little bit down, and then we're going to double knot that end. This way you should have enough to get started, but not so long that it'll get super tangled. Okay. And like I said, I'm, I'm showing you on the panda, but this is the stitch you're going to use to outline pretty much everything. So I'm going to show you an example with these dots that I just placed on this bag because they will match up with the outline dots that you have put on your bag. So we're going to come from the inside and we're going to, wherever you choose to start, you're going to poke your needle through. And then the next dot, you're going to push your needle back in. So the next dot down. And then the next dot after that, you're going to come back through from the inside. So it will look like you're leaving a space. And that's OK. And here's why. I'm going to go to the dot behind over that space that I left. And then I'm going to push it through underneath to the dot ahead. So take a second and see what that looks like. And that's going to fill in the line behind and set me up for my next stitch, which again, my needle will go in at the dot behind and come out at the dot in front of where I'm going. And in my example, I'm doing this in a straight line. But part of the really cool thing about this stitch is it makes it really easy to stitch curves and corners. Just wherever you are coming out with your thread, you're always going to use the dot behind and the dot ahead. And then when you reach the end of where you're stitching, you simply put your needle in the dot behind and then double knot in the back and you'll have your outline. So what does that look like when we're actually doing one of the animals? I'm going to start kind of at this panda butt and show you. So I'm going to go in and come out just like we did on the line. And now I've got the dot behind where my needle will go in. And I have the dot in front where my needle will come out. 
and that's kind of a curved line. So you guys will be able to see that it, it actually curves pretty nicely. So now I'm going to do one more just to kind of show you again, going in at the dot behind, coming out at the dot in front. And you're just going to do that all the way around in all the places where you would basically make a line to make that panda outline. And here's what that looks like when I've gone most of the way around. I'm just going to finish up this last, last thread there to finish it up. And then I'm going to double knot on the inside of the bag. to make sure that my embroidery thread is tied off and it won't come undone and my stitches won't come out. The next stitch I'm going to show you is what we'll use for the darkened spots of the panda, the ears, the eyes, the nose, the arm, the leg. You would also use it for the eye on the leopard or on the narwhal. And the elephant really doesn't need to use it much at all. But basically what we're going to do is use some long stitches close together to basically color in an area black. So I'm going to start in the middle of this ear. And I'm going to kind of lay that thread flat and then poke my needle in at one part of the outline and bring it out right next to where I had gone in before. So we're just making long flat lines in the shape. Your needle will go in and out at the outline part of that ear. So the stitches in the middle will be a little longer, the ones near the edges will be a little shorter. And you'll do the same thing for the eyes, for the arm, for the legs, and like I said, for the eye of the leopard and the eye of the narwhal. you just put those stitches as close together as you can. The nice thing about this is if you miss a part, you just double back and make another line to cover up where you see more white than you would like. And once I've done the face and the ears, now I'm going to do that whole length of arm and then where that leg is. And you can look at your tracing pattern to make sure that you're, you're doing it right where you want to. Now I'm going to start on the leg part. And when I'm done, it's going to look like this. So now I'm going to get out my green thread. I'm going to split it again, very slowly, into three strands for each piece. And I'm going to do that exact same stitch we used in the beginning to do the bamboo shoots kind of behind the panda. And you'll do the same thing for the inside of the leopard. You'll do it for the ocean waves and the texturing on the narwhal. And you'll use it for the sun rays behind the elephant. And there should be a picture of kind of my finished sample on your written instructions that you got in your box so you can kind of see. But also, if you, you know, want to do it differently, you're more than welcome to. This is your bag, so you should make it however you want it to look like. The really cool thing about this stitch also is, like if you wanted to write your name and then use the thread to go over it on your bag or really write whatever you want, um, it's an easy way to personalize it even more. So this is what my, my panda bag looked like when I was finished. Um, it's nice because it's not too tricky. It just takes a little bit of time to put all those stitches on there. Thank you for following along guys. I hope you enjoyed this month's Trash Panda Treasure Boxes. You've got all the information to sign up for next month. Also want to take this opportunity to remind you of two things we got going on in the teen section this summer. 
Every week we have a new prize drawing. It doesn't matter whether you have entered in the weeks previous or not, and all we want you to do is fill out a bookmark. And on that bookmark, you'll just say, if you've read for 30 minutes each day that week, you can text it to us, you can drop it off in the drive-thru, you can bring it to any one of the desks, and as long as you do it before we close on Saturday, you'll be entered in that week's prize basket drawing. So if you are doing some reading, listening to audiobooks, reading graphic novels, any of those things, you might want to try to get involved with that. Number two, we still have the scavenger hunt going on upstairs, so if you haven't followed all the clues to get the prize and unlock the safe, you might want to try it. It doesn't take too long, not a bad way to spend an afternoon. Again, thank you for following along. I hope to see you guys next month for another Trash Panda Treasure Box. Bye!